What's up, Future Fighter? Zach Tag here. I got a new video for you guys. This video is a buddy fight tutorial. It's a breakdown of data that I have a, that I've compiled from all the various trial decks that Booster Road has released to date. And I hope to use this to kind of give advice to new and old players for what kind of cards go into building a deck. So I mean, what does this mean? Is exactly what it means. I've made assumptions to bin cards. So I mean, like put each of the monsters, spells, and items, and impacts into different bins. And for this, of course, I've decided to keep impact monsters as impacts because of the restriction to play them only during the final phase. So for the first binning, we have monsters. So monsters are pretty straightforward. Monsters are easily from 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. I mean, only one world has access to 4, so you know it's kind of painfully obvious that on average you'd probably run 0 size 4s. And also of note is that there are Ride and Transform targets in Hero World, and I guess some generics have some as well. And these monsters count as items in a sense, but I have, I have decided to keep that classification as a monster just because, you know, you can only ride once, and you can, these are actually cards you can make use of on the field as with if you had do an extra item, you wouldn't be able to play the second item or something. So next is actually the most complicated classification, I think, the most, I don't know what you want to call it, controversial classification, but I've decided to bend spells into four different categories. Defense, Control, Draw, and Miscellaneous. So first, let's go into Defense. So Defense are cards that protect the player or monsters. For this, cards like Dragon Shield, Damage Control, Invigorating Breath, and Drago Energy all fall in this category for me. The card, like Pillar of Fire, for example, is not a card that I would consider a defense card. Because, for example, if you Pillar of Fire a monster with Soul Guard while they're attacking, the attack still goes through. So, I mean, this to me doesn't really count as a defensive action. Um, I, uh, of note, you see that traditionally you have the shield. I mean, lots of shields are actually classified as defense. Damage control, this doesn't negate, but it reduces damage, so I still felt this was kind of a protecting the player aspect. It doesn't protect the monsters, but it does protect the player. Um, invigorating Breath, I thought was an interesting choice for defense, mostly because it can act as a pseudo-shield. Um, I only really classified the major life gain cards as defense, because like gaining one life to me is kind of meh, and I've kind of left that as a miscellaneous choice. And of course, Drago Energy, um, it's a very... Very good card for protecting monsters. It, you could argue for placing it into the control bin, but it keeps your monsters al it potentially keeps your monsters alive on the field. So I've decided to put all cards like these into the defensive aspect. Next we have the control cards. So these are cards that control the board in one way or another. Pillar of Fire can alter the state of the board during the attack phase. Can remove the monster from the field. Barbed wire prevents your opponent from performing an action with their item. Brethren guard physically prevents your opponent from playing a spell. Hades fall is another form of destruction that I've considered, and I've even considered a uh, great spell, my grandfather clock, as a control, just because you're kind of controlling by getting an extra turn. Um, I was a little iffy. This could also be a draw category for me, but I felt like being able to just get the extra turn kind of just fell into the altering the board state. Like, you get to do something not normal. The third category that I've decided to bend things into was draw. So draw is pretty straightforward. Any card that basically net gets you cards. So, like, drawing a card, very easy. So, you know, you have your Abyss Symphony and your Abyss Symphony clones. That's pretty straightforward. Dragonic Grimoire, I consider draw because you discard your hand, but you can draw three new cards. Continue in cards like Hot Springs and Form a Party. Um, they don't necessarily draw cards per se, but they do get you cards. So Continue will net, net you cards from the drop zone that you didn't have in your hand originally when you played the spell. And Osira Guard. So there are cards like Osira Guard and Dragon Emperor Legend that do lots of effects. But I just it felt it easier to bend cards that just kind of drew you an extra card to, to put them in this category. So, I mean, basically any action that gets you different cards than the card that you played would be in this category. And then finally, we have Miscellaneous. Um, this is a generic bin. I think I could have easily have put Gage Excel as its own bin. But this, I mean, this bin 
mostly comprises of the gate Excel cards. So example, so our Starved Yummy Ghetto, Key of Solomon first volume, and then some of the cards that just deal damage and have other weird effects like Void Slasher, which is just used for dealing damage to your opponent based on the number of cards in their deck. There are probably also cards coming out that actually just mill your opponent, and this would also fall in the miscellaneous category. Um, from the breakdown that we'll see, there weren't too many cards in the miscellaneous section. A lot of the cards got banned in either draw control or defense. It's when you start seeing some of the custom decks that you start seeing more of these, I don't want you to call tech options. Um, next up, we have items. So items is pretty straightforward. Again, ride and transform targets were not considered in this breakdown. It is just the cards that say item on them in the top left corner that you see there. And I thought it was just easier to break, break it down like that to see how many decks actually played items. Um, and finally, we have impacts. Um, surprisingly enough, when you take a look at all the uh, all the trial decks, they at least came with two impacts. It was up between two and four impacts most times. And we were saying with the new Triple D decks that they come with four impacts, with four impact monsters. And this segues very well into impact monsters. So there's not a, there's not a lot of information how much these monsters will impact the game. I know some people have proposed some ridiculous stuff already with like some of the dragon attribute cards for the dragon or impact index. But I felt the restriction of being able to only like play these cards during the final phase could keep them as impacts. I think this is kind of a, a gimmick for now to try and get players to use more impacts because I kind of feel that outside dragon world impacts weren't getting a lot of love. So I think this is an excellent way to start getting people to play more cards that, you know, this was kind of unique to the whole game to begin with. So, I mean, this is the introduction. So, I mean, I do have, so the, the meat of this presentation is going to be our spreadsheets. And the spreadsheets contain just the breakdown. And you'll see all the numbers. It's just numbers. So I, thought, I thought it was much easier just to do this breakdown here. So, let's jump to the spreadsheet. So, trial decks, I guess, are more of some of the most interesting places to start when trying to get a feel for deck building. Since these were our first introduction to how Bushi Road anticipated us building decks. So I think it's worthwhile to understand the ratio of monsters to spells to items and impacts that Bushiroad has first introduced to us with the card game. So looking at it first, um, I have presented the list here of the, all the monsters with the number of monsters total. And then off to the right, you'll see that I have the breakdowns with threes, twos, ones, and zeros. And down below, we can see that we have the min-max average of each of these columns, I guess we could start here first. Um, on average, we can see that decks played 27 monsters. That means more than half of the deck was devoted to just monster slots. So I don't know if you would take this as you want to make sure that you always have monsters to draw. You could probably try and dive down e deep into the ratios of figuring out, you know, how many, what's the likeliness that I'll draw this card, uh, draw a monster card in my opening hand. You could do all that, but Bouchereau, from their decks have said, you know, 27 is the average, with the lower end being 24 and the maximum being almost near 30 at 29. So the deck that was at 24 was actually Star Dragon World, which is kind of interesting because I thought this is this was the first Star Dragon World trial deck and it introduced some of the cross uh, the cross nizes, which I think were pretty small in number at that time. Um, the other deck that I thought that was also pretty low, sitting at 25 was Dungeon World. And I thought an interesting thing about Dungeon World is that they had more classification draw cards than some of the other decks. Um, the next thing we move on to are the ratios of the monsters. So first we see that we have our size threes here. Um, and it's kind of odd, but I, I feel like most of the trial decks that Bushiroad's given out to people have included some number of size threes. So if you're trying to build a generic deck or get a feel for your own deck without having to build a trial deck, you may want to consider putting a couple of size threes in there. Well, most of the time, the size threes were pretty vanilla. I think some of the newer ones in the triple D trial decks were getting better because I think they were like size three double attacks. I know the 100 Demon one, the Gokuman guy, was actually a very solid size three. And you only see a couple of the trial decks that didn't run size threes, and that was the Jackknife Trial Deck, 
that was the Dungeon World deck who didn't even have size and didn't even have size threes for the longest time until I mean they had the dungeon enemy and demon lords but they didn't have any adventurers which Braves Explosion was largely an adventurer trial deck. Um, next we moved on to the ratio of size two. So on average players played about uh, the trial decks included about nine size size twos with the lower end being six and the upper end being 14. Um, from this we can see if we look um, there was a lot, definitely a lot more twos. Um, even if you look at the size ones, I think the decks were primarily made of size ones because it was lots easier to play two size ones as opposed to having two size twos in a deck. Um, having more size ones in a deck probably also meant it was easier for you to play, you find a, a partner for the size two that you drew into in your hand. Um, looking into the decks, the deck with the highest number of size twos was the jackknife deck and that, to me that, that seems perfectly reasonable except for the fact that I think there were only like six jackknives in that that deck which was kind of weird because it was like jack and then like thunderstorm and then brave hearts and with a lot of other garbage too so you would have thought that they would have included better jackknives with the trial deck um, but those are the size two ratios um, size ones again like we just said it was a very there was heavy 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 size twos um, with some of the upper bounds being 17 seen in the Asmodai trial deck and the, I guess was it, you call it a Black Dragon trial deck, the first Darkness Dragon World trial deck that introduced uh, Darkness Dragon World for the first time. And lastly, there's size zeros. Not many uh, decks had zeros. I think originally it was the, da the first Danger World trial deck. Um, and Dungeon World, and you didn't get any more size zeros again until you got to the Triple D trial decks with Sun Dragons and Black Dragons seeing some size zeros. Um, the, these ratios, you can make what you will. Um, some interesting notes is that some of the decks later on, so these are not like centric on anything in particular, I feel. These are like kind of kind of rushish. But like they're they're all kind of built so they have a two and a one on the field, a three you know if you draw it. But these decks are not really built or tailored to having a size three deck, which would I guess change the rate the size three decks ratios would change completely. Um, we can see some of this breakdown and some of the the profile breakdowns like breakdowns that I've done for my you from based off of my YouTube channel other YouTube channels, and also some of the, the website deck profiles that Bushi Road has put up for some of the Spring Fest and World Championship deck profiles. But continuing on, we have spells. So you see on average, uh, spells made up 16 cards of the 51 card deck for the trial decks. Which is, I guess that's probably about right, just because I feel you can, depending on the deck, obviously, so you could probably go way higher into spells. Um, you see that 19 is the upper end spell here, and that belongs to Dungeon World. And I don't know if there's any shock, because Dungeon World had all the mission cards that supported it. And the mission cards, I guess, it really flood the spell lineup. And a lot of the cards could also be used to kind of re-resource yourself back or draw more cards. So to start our breakdown, we have defensive cards. Um, when you look at the Dragon World decks, it's pretty easy to see how they have higher numbers. Um, <clears throat> Hero World had 10 cards that we considered a defensive card. I, I'm trying to recall exactly what uh, caused them to be there. I know uh, I've seen three moves. I mean, classically, you see at least four of those shields in every deck with the minimum being pretty low. Um, it's kind of weird that the 100 Demons had the two, and I think it was just they had the two Yamitages in their trial deck, and they didn't really have a whole lot else, because I think this was actually a little bit more centric on having a closed center, just because they gave you uh, two different weapons in the trial deck that allowed you to attack over your monster. So, um, <clears throat> But uh, I like the, the interesting note is the minimum two, maximum ten, on average seven. So to me, this says, you know, you play seven defensive cards. Seven cards that protect your creature or the player. Um, for me, I think the main lesson here is to more, more have versatile protection. So each of these trial decks, they had core cards that could protect the player and the monster. So even at two, Yamitage required a 100 demon monster 
but it could protect the player and and the monster. For the original trial decks, for like the uh, Dragon World trial deck, it came with like four green dragon shields and four Drago energy. So I mean, it was still very important to have the shields in place to protect the player. With the Braze Explosion, they only had the four Shaoshana. That was the only shield they had until Miracle Impact. I think Miracle Impact's still the only second shield that Dungeon World has. Um, moving on to Control. So Control is... You could argue that a lot of the Control cards could be used for defense. Um, I think a lot of the time people probably bend them that way. That way they can kind of go a little bit lower on the defensive cards and go a little bit higher on the Control cards. Because in, in most cases, a Control card will prevent damage to your life points, which, you know, is, is pretty reasonable. Like, you kill a monster without Soul Guard, it's not going to deal damage to you. You rest their item with Barbed Wire, it's not going to deal damage to you. But I felt that the, the distinction between the two would be an interesting data point to just see uh, the difference between them. And as you can see, there were, the minimum was zero, and the maximum was ten cards. So the minimum zero, I think, I actually belonged to the Sun Dragons. So this just tells you that they don't really have as much removal as they normally did. I think at first they had, uh, Dragon World had like the Dragonic Shoots in the deck. But uh, with, this, with the same trial deck, you see that they have zero control cards, but 10 cards capable of protecting a monster. And I think that's mostly because they do have the, uh, the Green Dragon Shields. They have the four Green Dragon Shields, they have the four Drago Energy Clones, and then they have the two Sun Dragon Shields. So it's kind of nuts how much uh, defensive cards they have in a trial deck. Uh, next we have draw cards. So draw cards, again, were the cards that added different cards to your hand besides the original card. And we see the zero being, uh, the, the lowest being zero again. And this belongs to the, the Katana World deck. This is actually kind of interesting because I don't know that they had a whole lot of draw power aside from the Shinobi Scroll, which was not a trial deck card to begin with. So the, a lot of their cards fell into the control category if we look here at 10 cards. Um, and then moving on we see that Dungeon World had 8 so this again was part of your former parties and your defeat monsters and your Dragonic uh, Grimoire clones. And last we see the miscellaneous. So I kind of hinted to it in the original video. The miscellaneous at first was kind of weak. But as you got into the newer trial decks, so like the Tomorrow's Modi deck, they had some Gage Excel. And I also included Speed Summon as a miscellaneous, just because I wasn't really sure how to treat that kind of card. It was kind of a, an odd card for me to classify, just because you, you're kind of, it's not, you're not gaining anything. You use two cards to protect yourself. So I guess it could be a defensive card. It probably should be classified as a defensive card. Um, you see the hundred demons. They had a lot. They had the three starved Yami Ghettos in addition to, to one of those trial deck cards that just dealt the damage and you gained a life. And then the newer the newer decks, I guess, also having some different forms of Gage Excel, where the the Sun Dragons had that one. If you had a Sun Dragon on the field, you got an extra Gage or something. So that's the breakdown of spells. Um, for items next, we see that we each. This is, I think, probably the more interesting point, that every trial deck came with an item and impact card, like cards. So, I mean, at minimum, there was four items being played. And those four items were, were assigned to both the Katana World deck and the, the Hero deck. Uh, the Hero World deck. The Hero World deck, I guess, makes sense. I can't remember if they had any Rider Transform targets, but if they did, that makes perfect sense. And for Katana World, I can't quite remember what the, the trial deck weapon was. But I kind of felt like they probably could have had more weapons in their trial deck. But you see a lot of sixes across the board, even for the new Triple D trial decks. And I think you could pair this with the ratios for size twos and ones in the deck. We see with the Triple D trial decks that they almost fall into the near identical ratios. With all, all three decks having uh, two size threes this near same amount for size twos and you get some variation with the size ones because they have some decks have zeros and some don't. I think this is all meant for the open center plays 
and you can see that some more of the defense of that with some of the more defensive cards over control cards in these trial decks. But I did think it was an interesting note. Even the Asmodag trial deck, the Magic World trial deck, included weapons, and it was the gun rods, so maybe that's telling players that maybe they could consider at least some, some gun rods in almost all Magic World trial decks, or decks that they build on their own. And impacts. So, I mean, Bushiro has been trying to push impacts since the start of the game. I mean, on a, you see on average, people play three impacts, or Bushiro played three impacts per trial deck, with the new trial decks going all the way up to four, the minimum end being two, and you see that with the Dungeon World, which, you know, former party could search for your impact, so make of you what you want with this number. And the other one being uh, Star Dragon World with the Radiant Punisher, the Gargantua Punisher light card for Star Dragon World, which is also a very good impact. You can't tutor it or anything, though, but I think the difficulty with that one is the expensive for the deck to play. Um, so this is a very simplistic breakdown. Um, I don't you do what you will with it. Um, an interesting note is that if you add up all the averages for the average monster, the av the average monsters, spells, items, and impacts, you still get a fifty-one card deck. So I mean, if you just want to try and for new players, just use these the, these four numbers to try and get a feel for building a new deck to see how well these ratios work. I mean, I, I would encourage it for a start because some people just don't like trial decks. They just want to try and build something themselves and then work from the ratios from there. Um, it's not until we get into later deck profiles that we see how players have kind of evolved from the trial deck model or, you know, still kind of conform to it. So this is, this is my first video. Hopefully we have more video breakdowns. I know you can't really see the spreadsheets that I, the other spreadsheets that I have, but I have been generating results based off of other YouTubers and other deck profiles that Bushi Road has put on their website, just to try and get a sense because it's interesting to look at decks that do well for Bushi Road, the ones that make it to the regional and uh, continental championships, just to see the insights of the players who are doing well in events. Um, so that's the video, you guys. Um, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed content like this. I can try and put more content together like this in the future. This is this wasn't too complicated. It's just looking at ratios really to get an idea for how many monsters you play in a deck, how many spells, items, impacts. Because a lot of players come from like Vanguard, and Vanguard was very by the book because it was like you played eight size threes. You played like 10 size twos and there was like 14 ones. You had to play 16 triggers and then you had your starter. And you only moved slightly from all those ratios. But for Buddy Fight, it was a little bit more open-ended. So I hopefully this is a good start for newer players to try and get a feel for what the ratios of the deck are supposed to be by Bushiro standards. And in, in subsequent videos, you'll be able to see some of the breakdowns from my own channel, some other popular YouTubers for Buddy Fight, and some of the, the champions that Bushy Road events have uh, brought forth to us. So that's the video, guys. Um, as always, like, comment, subscribe. Um, leave feedback down below on your opinions about some of the classifications, if you guys have any. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.